This is Melina Lee Williams Haas. I deeply appreciate you listening and taking the time to hang out with me. I will be addressing issues of life, the universe, and everything that are often bogged down and mired in shame and grief, and talk about how they can be repackaged to be useful and gorgeous and fucking awesome for you. So, sit back and relax, or, you know what? Sit up and freak out. However, you prefer to listen. Let's go. Okay, so what had happened was Europe. And then I had the very mistaken idea that while we were traveling... I'd be recording my podcasts. All this would be so easy to do. What I failed to take into account was, you know, life and everything else that went along with it. So this week, I'm just sort of placeholdering so that I can catch up soon, sooner than later, I hope. I'm speaking to you now from a rented RV somewhere in Ohio. Spouse Master and I are on our way to meet up with some friends who are having a commitment ceremony, and we didn't really want to fly again, having just come off of a series of disastrous flights and cancellations. This is a word of advice to those of you, sidebar, sidebar, who might be traveling this summer. Holy shit, it's going to be a fucking disaster. We had our flights canceled three times trying to leave Vienna a couple weeks ago. There's an industry-wide problem because during the pandemic, of course, everything was scaled back, so many people were laid off and furloughed, and then governments all over the world lifted restrictions quite abruptly, and within one week there were strikes and deliberate work slowdowns across Europe because, and rightfully so, y'all, I mean, I can't even really be mad But the reality is that no airport anywhere in the world is prepared for a full-fledged resurgence of travel. So if you're going anywhere, just get ready. Don't do what I did, which is assume that I would be back at home, for example, the day before my 35th high school reunion, which may sound like an eye-rolling kind of thing, but I actually have quite a few people that I went to high school with high school and elementary school because our school was contiguous for 15, 16 years for a lot of us from pre-kindergarten through to 12th grade. And so our reunions actually are kind of awesome for me at least anyway. And yeah, so because of these flight cancellations, I missed it. It just came and went and I was sitting in Vienna scrambling, trying to make sure that we still had a hotel room to stay in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What we were doing in Europe was a series of premieres of pieces that the Spassmeister wrote that were supposed to have been premiered years ago. And in the first case, the pandemic shut down so many things. And then there were a series of performances of several of his operas that were scheduled, one of which also wound up being canceled due to COVID-19 because it is still ain't over, folks. A lot of people like to act as though shit is done when it is certainly bloody knot. All this was extremely stressful for me because I had to plan a four-week trip to Europe. And in addition to all of the performances, there was the time between the performances where we were trying to find just the perfect exact right place that would be conducive to the Spassmeister working and continuing to crank out his art. And also for me to not be entirely miserable because We don't necessarily have the same ideas as to what constitutes comfortable, relaxing time off. You see, because I like cities. He likes grass and trees and dirt. He doesn't mind if it's humid and 100 degrees. And I want to die and pull off my skin. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, If the humidity is above like 65%, I'm just (laughs) fucking mad all the time. Anyway, so you can imagine, I mean, even if you're not an artist, you have shit that you're proud of that's important to you. And imagine having the shit that you're proudest of, the shit that's the most 
important to you outside of your control at the critical point where it's just about to be born. So it's very stressful for him as a composer to have situations where now his work is handed over to, you know, a conductor, to the orchestra, to the singers, to the performers to bring it to life. That last step can be very grueling. And add to that, he's just kind of an anxious person generally. So there was a lot of stress going in and my job to be the cooling rod in the reactor core, try to keep everything stable and flowing, was sorely tested over the past couple of months. And my brain just got entirely eaten up. And this brings us back around to why it's been a couple of weeks since I posted a podcast episode. And I kept saying to myself, literally daily, just sit down, just say anything. Just your very presence people have told me, is enjoyable, but it still wasn't enough. And I would pick up my phone and I would look at my app and I would look and see that I had an incoming message that I hadn't read from my producer. And I would say, okay, see, you're such a fucking loser. You can't even do this podcast. And you went through all this trouble to, to pull it together and you're still not fucking putting it together. Because God forbid I should just be human. You know, I could have just put together a 30 second thing and said, hey, you know what? I'll be back. I'll see you. I just, I got shit. I got shit to do. But that felt like failure. And God forbid I should say I can't do something. But the reality is there's plenty of shit that I can't do. And saying that out loud just seems so terrifying to me. Even just saying to several of my friends, you know, can you guys just check in on me? I'm having a really hard time and supporting Georg in, in all of his work is something that I value above all else. But sometimes it's really fucking hard. And sometimes I just need someone to turn to and say, oh, my God, can you just see if I'm OK? Because I probably am, but some days I'm not. And just someone asking me how I'm doing. Yeah, that can turn the tide. Check on your strong friends, like your friend that you think never needs anyone, doesn't need help. They're always on top of their shit. They're always doing fine. Uh, they may not be. So check on your strong friends. Just say, you know what? You're strong and awesome. And maybe you're fine, but maybe you're not. And if you're not, that's fine, too. There's so many things that I find to destroy myself over. I had an online correspondence, some online studying for a certification that I was so excited about. And then I realized I was having such a hard time. And after weeks of struggling, I just finally sat up one day and I said, I'm not sure I can do online learning. Something about this was just not... I wasn't connecting. I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't. But then I said, okay, you know what? If you were smart, you would be able to do this under any circumstances, which is P.S. Utter bullshit. And of course, I spoke to a friend of mine who is an amazing teacher and they were like, are you kidding? There's many, many people who absolutely can't learn online. And there's people who, there's even more people. And they said that they think this is the majority of people who think that they're learning and they're just sort of getting by because for them, that type of dynamic is not what helps things to land. So it's so easy for me to say, I'm a fuck up. I'm a failure. I suck rather than, you know what? This is just not for me and move on. I'm so adept at doing that in relationships, but I am completely not good at cutting myself any fucking slack. So this little mini episode is just to cut myself some slack and to say, you know what, I'll be back and it'll be fine. And if you are out here not doing the shit that you quote unquote should be doing, fuck it, let it go, drop it. It's fine. Take the time you need. This message is also mostly for me. I need to take the time I need. And it's all going to be all right. I can't say that about very many things. But I can say that about me. And I can say that about you. And I can say that 
about the journeys that we're all taking right now, we're going to be all right. It might not be the all right that we think is all right. But life is about shifting and changing. Fuck, it's about time I cut some stuff, some slack for myself as well. So I'm taking a deep breath and regrouping. <laughs> I'm going to hopefully enjoy the next couple days of this RV trip as we travel to see some friends, as we travel to commemorate my birthday, my 53rd birthday, I guess. Yeah, 53. Not particularly interesting. I don't find that number very engaging, but ugh, whatever. And it's also going to be the anniversary of Spossmeister and I having our coloring. I guess it's eight years now. Whoosh, time flies. Time flies. Anyway, I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you're safe and healthy. I hope that you are cutting yourself some slack. I hope to God that you are realizing that each and every day that you are alive on the face of this earth in the body that you're in right now is a fucking miracle and cool as shit. I'll talk to you soon. And if you have a moment, check out my Patreon. And what else? I just started a new job. I'm a columnist for a new website called Zipper Magazine. Put a link, I guess, in the comments. Thanks to Sunny Megatron for getting me on board with that. Really excited that there's a new platform where folks can get good, solid information about kink and BDSM, about power exchange relationships, because it's important. At least I think it is. So therefore, it fucking is. What the hell? Anyway, that's all I have for right now. My back is killing me. I screwed that up a week and a half ago, and I've just been in nonstop pain since then. Also a little hard to focus and sit down and try to figure out what to say to imaginary people. <laughs> anyway, I love you, imaginary people, and... I am going to grab some of my medical marijuana gummies. I'm going to stretch out my back. See if I can get the spouse master to put some more asper cream on it. Because it seems to help a little bit. Y'all, hang in there. Do that self-care, whatever the fuck that looks like. And if you're lacking and slacking on your self-care... Cut yourself some slack on that too. God damn, because it can be even worse when you're just like, oh my God. Not only is everything super tough, but I'm also not taking care of myself. And I'm going to beat myself up over that. So don't do that, y'all. Please don't. Please don't. But what I would certainly recommend is being kind to yourself, reaching out to your friends. And if you need folks to reach out to you, have the guts and the love for yourself to let your friends help. And I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. People want to know that you need their help and that their being there for you is valuable to you. So taking the time to reach out to your friends and to let your friends know that you need reaching out, super valuable, super important, so critical, you guys. You have no idea how beautiful it is to know that your assistance and your presence is valued. Anyway, I'm going to talk to you soon, and I'm sending out the most positive and loving squishy hugs and vibes and all that shit. And I'll talk to you soon. Stay amazing. You've been listening to All That and Mo. Thanks so much for spending your precious, precious time with me today. My podcast is produced by Cody Crabb. Theme music by Georg Friedrich Haas, as performed by Marcus Weiss. 
and I look forward to spending time with you again really soon. Mm-hmm.